Joseph Jazz Hayden is a Harlem community activist now facing trumped-up weapons charges brought against him in retaliation for his cop watch work. He and his associates videotape the NYPD as they conduct stop and frisk and other unwarranted searches. The 70-year-old organizer of the Stop the New Jim Crow campaign and creator of the website AllThingsHarlem.com gave us the full story last week. AllThingsHarlem.com, as you can see, uh, you know, we got over 400 videos up there. And we begin to cover everything in Harlem, you know, politics, education, housing, health care, and police community relationships. I was in the bar and somebody said, hey, police out there, they got somebody. You know, I rush out, you know, with my camera because I keep my camera on me. And I begin to start filming them. And uh, immediately they begin, uh, one of them begin uh, shining the flashlight in my camera. And I tell them, like I tell all police, I'm here, I'm on your side. I'm here to watch you provide the community courtesy, professionalism, and respect. You know, isn't this what you want? Isn't this what you're gonna do? This is what you advertise on the side of your car? So why are you trying to prevent me from filming this? It seems like this would be the thing that you would want me to do. You know, unless, of course, you're not providing courtesy, professionalism, and respect. You know? and they keep shining the lights. I say, okay, it's clear what you're about. <laughs> so anyhow, two months later, I'm driving down Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard, uh, at a bar that I stopped at, we stopped at uh, uh, Lorraine's when I was over here. I was headed there, and all of a sudden there's flashing lights. And I'm looking at these flashing lights, and I pull over, and who is it? These same two bullies, you know, come up to the car, yeah, yeah, we know you and uh, you know, step out of the car. I say, well, listen, you don't have my permission to search his car. You don't have my consent to search me. If you want to pat me down to make sure I don't have no weapon, if you're concerned about a weapon, you can do that. Don't stick your hands in my pocket. They say, all right, you know, go to the back of the car. So another two policemen take me to the back of the car, and uh, they immediately jumped in the car and went to search him. <laughs> they indicated that they were charging me as a felony for this pocket knife that you can buy in any 99 cent store in the country, any hardware store in the country, you know, and, uh, and a miniature baseball bat, right? Uh, not, yeah, <coughs> I mean, you know, memorabilia, you know, actually it's my wife's. Mm -hmm. So they charged me with two counts of uh, possession of a dangerous weapon, a dangerous weapon. You know, and I'm facing two to seven years on each count. Huh? I'm 71 years old, man. Yeah, I mean, there's a call to pack the court that day, but it's been packed the last two court appearances. This is eight months. I mean, the grand jury action should, should take no less than 30 days, take no more than 30 days. Eight months, you're sitting there trying to decide whether you're going to, you know, what are they looking for? Cy Vance, the district attorney of Manhattan, I literally, interviewed this guy. He came into my office when he was running for office and he spoke to me about uh, what he was going to do to uh, uh, you know, bring fairness and, and, and equity to the office. You know. and then you, you have 700,000 stop and frisks in the city and not one district attorney has stepped up and said, man, this is wrong. And nobody has stepped to the mayor, none of them have stepped to the mayor or the police commissioner Kelly and said, listen, man, don't bring these cases, these cases, man, uh, you violate these people's constitutional rights. I still continue to hold out hope, you know, for the district attorney because this is his opportunity to validate the promises that he made when he was running for office. Here's the chance for him to say, listen, in the interest of justice, this is absolute, you know, I have to dismiss this. No way I can prosecute this man, right? And so a petition has grown to over 1,600 signatures. Uh, letters have been flowing into the district attorney's office on a daily basis. They're the servants of the people, even though they've turned that relationship upside down. Now, when has the servant had any secrets from the master? <laughs> from the people that pay him, right, and make his life livable, 
you know, gives him the health benefits and make it able for him to send his kids to school. And we can't cover them. We can't videotape them. We can't record them. Get out of here, man. Come on, man. You know, if you don't like the job, go get another one, man. And you take half of, uh, one half of the working class and you have them regulate the other half of the, the, the working class, the unemployed and, and potentially social dynamite half of the working class is controlled. Same thing in the prisons. You know, you take the rural communities and the urban communities, you make one to keep or you make one to keep, right? Mm -hmm. And the same thing with the military. You know, you got people over, overseas that, that are opposing U.S. policy, you know, we send our young men over there and turn them into serial killers. Uh, on a national level, we're building this national security state. Every day there's new regulation, right? They started out with the DNA uh, thing for sex offenders, then violent felony offenders, then all felony offenders, and now they got all felony and misdemeanor offenders. You know, pretty soon all they got to do is walk in the Harlem Hospital, man, and just start DNA in the babies, you know, because that's what it's coming down to, mm -hmm. you know. 